morning. <laughs> Since a lot of our work is traveling and performing and teaching, we meet a lot of different people and there's so much more involved in my mystery besides just Todd and myself. So we wanted to include some of those students uh, to encourage the other students, the ones who actually have the video on at home by themselves. Maybe they won't feel so alone because they'll see other people and their difficulties as well as their triumphs. <laughs> hoping that people will gain an understanding of mime more in a performance sense by the second book. In the first book, we were able to show a lot of technique and a lot of ability to, to create body positionings. Now, this is both a logical continuation from what we've begun in the first and also an application of how they can use those basic techniques on, a, on the next level. Also, we want them to grow in their ability to see as mimes. And so um, I think that television and mime are kind of similar art forms in that they draw the focus of the audience right where you want it. And so through video, we're able to show specific things and teach them how to, to notice things as a mime would have to notice things in order to recreate it. We know the shell. We understand my identification. Each of these hand positions are generally done with a certain amount of neutrality in the body. What we're going to start to work on today is to start to use the whole body in a hand design. These hand designs incorporate not only now hand positioning, but the, what the body does in reference to the hand design. Okay? So let's start with the chapeau, okay? the hat. You're going to be reaching up and using a my identification with two fingers instead of just one. Okay, and grab the hat off of its hook and grab it with the other. Now the difficulty at this point is a lot of times when you move the hands, don't change the si size of the chapeau, otherwise it starts bending on a shape like this. Okay? So keep it solid, keep the shape same. Now as you bring the chapeau under, you're going to dunk down the head, plie just a little bit, and then put the head into the chapeau. And you're going to go re let it go. You can adjust it and then pull it off. And of course, you want to put it back on its hook. All right, let's try that, all right? Double zero, and my chapeau. All Now, the same design of the fingers is used for other objects. My identification is also used for the jewelry. So I can take, for instance, earrings. Probably a lot of guys are starting to wear earrings nowadays. We're going to reach out, grab an earring, grab an earring. I'll leave a little bit of space in between the fingers this time. Keep the fingers back instead of bending, because then it looks like you're holding nothing. Okay? And you're going to take it, you're going to show us your ear, and tack, 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 onto the ear. And tuck, 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 onto the ear. All right, let's try that again. Double zero. And see the earring. Grab the earring. Grab the other earring. And da, da, da. And da, da, da. Now, oh, there's a necklace. Same thing with the hand. You're going to grab it. You're going to grab. You're going to pick it up in front of you. You're going to present your neck with a forward projection of the head. And bring the hand together here, behind the neck, and tuck, 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 like we do a button, and down. Then you want to look at the piece with two fingers, identification, adjust it, look at it, and down. Again, necklace, oh, look, pick it up, around the neck, da, 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 nice piece, and down. 
Those are just a couple of the designs that we use for jewelry, as well as for the hat. Now, Marilyn, if you'll show the next one. The next thing is the uh, sewing hand. So we'd like you to notice um, not only the movement of it, but the rhythm and the pattern that you make in space with your hands, okay? So first it's going to be the same hand as chapeau, but you're going to take a piece of fabric here, underhanded. Then we have the needle in one main identification, okay? Then we're going to pick, and it goes through the fabric. You take the other side of the needle, and then you have to pull the thread through. So there's going to be tuck, tuck, tuck is the rhythm. Then it's free to go. So now it's going to go in an arc this way. Turn it around and tuck, 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 tuck. And tuck, 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 tuck. Now you don't have to watch your hand all the way around. <laughs> okay, you need to present what you're doing. You can do without looking. Tuck, 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 tuck. And Duck, duck, duck. Good. And double zero. Thank you. Now the next hand position that we're going to do is the painter hand. So if everybody will have a seat, I'll go ahead and demonstrate this for you. A lot of times the painter hand is more an improvisation of playing with the idea of the painter. And again, we have a palette hand now. And this time, the my identification is going to show me the brush. I start, however, with my palette. Board's already set up. I reach for my paint, and my thumb is going to be the paint coming out. Okay. Grab a little bit more paint. Now, I have to get the brush. Look at my object. Look at the canvas. does include the tapping of the foot, and as the paint. You can continue to play even up to the point of having a sword fight with your painting. Marcel has a great thing, and the piece is called the painter. But the hand position is simply a my identification, a palette hand, swirling the paint, and a stroke, coloring it up with rhythm. Okay? Stand up. The next position that we're going to go into is the critique, which is writing hand. Okay? You're going to go into a third position. And plie. After you plie, bring your arm forward. Now, don't have it too high. Okay? Keep it down just below the chest area. Okay? You're going to bring a hand up into my identification. Okay? And this is going to be your pen. Okay, let it go. You're going to reach for your pen. It's a plume. You're going to pick it up, dip it in the ink, and then write. You're going to write in big circles, not little sceny ones, because then people are trying to see what you're writing. So it's big circles across the page from left to right. You pause in between each one and think a little bit. Tap, 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 tap. Ah, I know. Right. OK, let's try this. Now, the one thing that you'll have to remember is to try to keep that plie. Throughout the thing, we have a tendency of doing this and straightening up our legs. So keep the plie deep. Third position, please. Plie, and go. Sign your name, da, 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 duck. Put away your thing and stand up. Now, the other thing to remember is remember on the hand position, it's not flat, but tilted, because you're actually writing on a curved surface. So it's a tilted hand position, not upright, but on the diagonal. 
Double zero. All right, now we're going to go back to the plie, third, plie. We're going to grab a piece of paper. Now what we're going to show is Thino, a typewriter. So we're going to put that in the top of the typewriter and pull it down. There you go. Pull your hands away. We're going to bring our fingers forward using um, a third finger and a trill. Okay, can you trill your hands? There you go. We're going to do that on the typewriter at a different count. But you're punching the keys, at, as it were. Okay. Now, the typewriter is going to be, the cartridge is going to move across the page. We're going to push it back. And, and as we type, it moves back across the page. Okay. Ready? Start. Stino hand. Mastino, typewriter hand. And plie. Grab your paper. And Look at the text. And grab the paper. Stand up, look at it. It's good. Put it down. And double zero. Okay, have a seat. I'll go ahead and demonstrate the next hand position, which is my oito speaker hand. A speaker hand, much like the painter hand, does not have a necessarily a precise thing that you have to do, as much as playing in the improvisation. Now, we're not using our mouths to communicate words, and so our hands have to be able to capture and captivate the idea of the words that I'm saying. And we're going to try to create the rhythm of the words, the idea of the word, with the movement and rhythm of the hand. Okay? So, you start in a court, brings it to silence. Opening statement. He taps his foot to create the stressing of his words. And no. Concedes. Vague idea. Fine point. A precise point asks a question. Searches for an answer. Makes a point. Again, speaker hand can try to make a fine point by bringing your hand to my identification. A generality with a swooping of the hand. Define an idea with a chop. Definitive or a gentle thing for a question. Stand up. The next position that we want to work with is maki caress, caressing hand. Now, what happens, you've learned the oriental hand. Now, what, instead of going here, you're going to take this position and bring it sideways. And that's how we create the caress. So what we're going to do is we're going to see the object. We're going to caress head, shoulders, and waist. It's very gentle. Your body creates the gentleness of the touch as well. I can do that with one hand. My foot is in third. I create an arc. The other hand. What is your other hand doing? Is it in my class each? An animal is created by plie, starting with the head and going down the back. Remember to keep the pelvis tucked under, not to allow it to be sticking out here. Keep it tucked under. Again, a caress is soft, so the rhythm is gentle and kind. It's a lyric. Whether the object is actually there, or you're just caressing the space of the imagined object. Okay. Going on to the next hand, using the same thing of this oriental hand, 
we're going to create serpent hand. Your hand position will be here, and the serpent will move by doing the oriental hand, as well as the arm design. However, the serpent has to come out, so we turn sideways. We put our arm behind, and either here or up here, and the snake comes out. Snakes up our body. We turn toward our audience. Oh, he comes out and speaks to us. And double zero. Another hand, a demand of sort, Machiette, a demand of sort, a hand that demands us to leave, is going to be a count of three. You're going to bring the hand here, you're going to point outward, and then you're going to turn your body. It's a series of tucks. So it'll be a ah, tuck. Okay? The leg stays straight that I'm pivoting on. I just simply plie and bend in my leg, my back leg. Here. Boom. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Ha, ha, ha. Down. Again. And. Ha, ha, ha. Again. One more time. And. Five, six, seven, eight. Ha, ha, ha. Double zero. Next thing we're going to work on is again using the idea of the Mahoyantao. We're going to use the arms involved to create the identification of an angel. Now, an angel is supposed to be light, so as we push against the air, we're going to be going up, we're going to keep it light, and not be trying to struggle with it. Keep the flowing in the hands. What's going to happen is you're going to bring your arms to your side, your elbow's going to lead, then the wrist, elbow down, and wrist down. Elbow, wrist, hand, elbow, wrist, hand. This shape is the shell. This shape is the marguerite. You're going through each of these positions as you go through. Now it starts with the hand going up here, the side. Try to keep the shoulders from coming up into the ear as you do the arm position. Now, if I take this same idea and I make it smaller in half, you have what is the angel wings. Now, it's a light movement. It isn't difficult. It's not hard. It's not heavy. It's not struggling against something. It's very light, léger. Okay? If I start in plié, my hands will come up above my head. That's right. Keep tucked under, and then I push off. And my feet beurre as if they're not on the ground. Following elbow, wrist, elbow, wrist, elbow, wrist. Now I can make it smaller here. That's right. Up, 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 up. Neutral. Have a seat. Angels can also play in this position. And double zero. Therefore, you can see how you could use the angel arms in a lot of different variations. Next thing that we want to do is we want to learn how to take these hand designs and put them into an actual march. So if you all stand up, we'll get to the positions and get ready for the marches. The first march that we're going to be doing is going to be the demon marches, uh, which are three different designs, both the demon march, the demon drop, and the demon lunge. OK, from that divisor, we're going to now create a hand position using the claw hand here, if you remember, or menace, la menace. We're going to create the fingers on different levels for the demons. Now you're going to do after that is you're going to put every major joint on a slightly different plane of the hand. You're going to pull them up and then drop them low. Chest collapse slightly, incline forward and slide um, 
backward inclination of the pelvis to create this position up and then down. Okay. Now the step involved with it is you're going to pull, as your hands go up, you're going to bring up the knee here onto a releve. And you're going to pull up, and then you're going to bounce like if you've been shot. Someone's cut the wires, and you drop down. So the actual step is like this. Let's try that together. We're going to take four paces forward, and then we'll stop, okay? All right, remember on the, the march, the diable, the demon march, it's only a demi-plié. Hands are going to come straight up and then down. It's only a demi-plié. We'll do it together, going forward, four steps, and five, six, seven, eight. <sighs> Turn. That was a demon march, the march de diable. Now we're going to do the demon drop, which is the same idea. I pull up, and then I drop all the way to the floor. Okay, let me show you that again. I'm going to pull up, and then down. This is as if it's been cut. Keeping the facial expression in the demon, and it goes. Okay, we're going to try that going forward, four steps. Remember to keep the pelvis tucked under, underneath you, and don't end up sticking out the tailgate. Okay, keep it under. Okay, let's try it together from double zero. Demon drop. Five, six, seven, eight. <gasps> And back. Now the next position that we're going to work into is the demon lunge. Starting with a double zero. The demon lunge is the exact same thing, pulling up, but this time when you shoot down, you're going to keep that leg as straight as possible. Okay? And of course the visage forward. Remember that the fingers are still on the fingertip and then it's all the way up. So you're going to go all the way down, all the way up. Be sure to breathe. It's going to take a little bit more time to get the whole movement in. So we're going to take a little bit longer breath. Be taking four steps forward and the demon lunge. Five, six, seven, eight. <sighs> Good. All right. Now let's return to double zero. Scoot back. That's right. That's the Monte de Diable. The next thing that we're going to do is sew our hand, which Marilyn will now explain to you. Okay. Now we've done sewing, uh, the sewing hand, but this is the sewer hand, which is different. We're going to be sewing seeds instead of fabric. So we've got a basket. And then uh, we're going to be reaching into that basket for the seeds. So this is main qui prend. If you remember this from the last video, it's like the hand that takes. So what will happen is um, we'll start in a third position. We have the basket. You're going to go main lyrique, reach into the, the basket of seeds, and we'll tell you, do main qui prend. So you take the seeds. Then what's going to happen is we do like a leaf hand and we drop the seeds. So we're scattering seeds. So now to make it into a march, what we'll do is be on the promontory to begin with, have the basket, and we take one step, the left foot, reach into the basket. It's a closed position. Take another step, open the position, and sow the seeds and dip and so, okay, let's try that all together now. Main c'est mieux, beginning on the left foot and the basket here. And go. One, two, and And zero. 
Thank you. Okay, back to your place. And Todd, take us with Hand of God. Great. Now, the Hand of God, starting in double zero. There you go. The Hand of God is going to be an open position with third ring finger in. What you're going to do is you're going to be standing in your double zero. You're going to see God. And then you're going to lean back onto the back leg, plieing, and keeping the first leg tendu. Okay? You want to point that toe. There you go. Okay. Now, the hand here is in the hand of God, and this is shell hand. Okay. You're going to pivot away from God, and you're going to take a step. One, and then two. And then you're going to drop the hand, head away, and come here. Okay. Let's try it together. Okay. Nice double zero. Five, six, seven, eight. And double zero. Please find your place again. In the next hand position, returning to double zero, please. Using blessing hand, which you've already learned. In this case, one is going to be in blessing hand, and the other in God hand to the side. You're going to bring your hand up and your other arm down. The arms are going to unfold. You're going to start, and you're going to unfold the arms here and into the position. Okay, again, that's here, into the position. I'm going to breathe up as I do it. Now, don't get that shoulder way up in the ear. Keep that, keep that shoulder down. There you go. Okay. Now, when you do it, you're going to step into the position from your left foot, left onto to a point, and then cross over onto the right. So it's all pulled up. You're looking slightly upward. Your hand is here and here. The whole movement then, from neutral, five, six, seven, eight. <gasps> now, once we get here, the face doesn't necessarily have to be stern. What we're going to do is we're going to descend. So I'm going to take this position. I'm going to pull up <gasps> and step down, hand trailing down as I do. And then I'm going to do for the final position, Makidon, which will be here. You're on the promontory. Here. Okay. Following my rhythm. Starting with the left foot, crossing the right in front. Five, six, seven, eight. <sighs> Okay, good. Step back. The next hand position that we're going to do is God hand. And we're now going to use two Ma blessings. And in God hand, this is supposed to be the hand of God. What you're going to do is you're going to unfold the arms. And when both hands come up, they unfold the same way up. I step onto it just the same, much sterner face this time. And then when I come down, I bring the hands down, I plie, and then I'm going to take steps of March of Courage, okay, with a finger in nice Renaissance, posing the last step with either hand of God or hand of Michelangelo, okay, and the double zero, God hand, okay, ready, five, six, seven, Eight. Double zero. And return to the position. This concludes the marches that we do with the hand designs. Now I'll go ahead and get into the uh, first position. We're going to go ahead and start with axes as well as translations and projections. So, Marilyn.
Okay, now we're going to do some corporeal mime, and we won't do the entire scale, but we'll just do parts of it. And as you know, there are different points in which we um, isolate in our bodies and that we rotate or incline around those points, right? So now we're going to do some that are dealing mostly with the lower parts of our body. So we're going to have two axes that we're working with going through the, the hip bones is about where it would be, right here. Right, and so then what's going to happen is we're um, going to be in second position. Go ahead. Okay, and in a double zero. We'll do ax conform, and what that will be is if we're going to conform to the right, then the axis on the right will be a fixed point. So we can't uh, move it like this. We've got to move around that point. It's like there's an axle, and we're going to turn like this, okay? without moving that point. This point has raised higher, hasn't it? This is the only one that's fixed. Okay. And try it the other direction real quick. Okay, good. All right, let's do that together. So it's ax conform, and we'll start to your right. And conform, and zero. Other side, conform, and zero. Very good. Okay, now we're going to do ex contraire. So if this is the conform, the other one is the contrary. So that's why it's called ex contraire. So this one is going to stay fixed now as we go to that side. So that means it's going to stay fixed. The other one is going to drop and the knee bends. Okay, again, be careful, all of you. It's a common mistake to um, let this move to the side. And we don't want that to happen. It's got to stay right there and we just drop, so you're moving around it, okay? Ready? And zero. Let's try that now. Here we go. And ex contraire, and up, ex contraire, and up. Now, where have we um, used this position before? Can anybody tell me? Leaning on a table. Leaning on a table. Okay, yes, it's very effective when we're doing a counterweight. So what would happen, for instance, let's just try it together. If you were going to um, put your hand on a table, all right, and then put your weight into it. It's an ex contraire, isn't it, with your hips. And up, and take the hand away. So see, had I let this point move, then I would move my, <laughs> my table. See, that's why it's very important to isolate. See that? All right, great. Um, now, a lot of times when we're doing these positions, we want to use shell arms like this. The hands and the arms are in shell. Right. Good. And when we bring them down, we're going to go into the horizon line and back into zero with main classique. Okay, good job. Now, for both of the axes to move, will be a double axis, double axe. And what will happen is you have to replace your support. You're in a second position, so you want to take your foot into the center, and your support is now through there. So here's our center line, and now we keep ourselves centered by replacing the support. Okay? So the double axis, and we turn, and double axis, and return. Horizon line to double zero. And the tour I fell now is the entire body is going to go onto a diagonal line like this. And we want a nice straight line. You can't break here or here, anything like that. So be careful because I've seen a couple of you uh, start to go to the side, and you, you keep the top of your body in the standing up position, and the bottom of your body does the right thing here. But you have to take the whole, the whole line. All right? So arms in shell, and tour I fell. Now test with the foot to make sure you have your balance. And return, return, and duck. Good. And zero. Arms in, into the horizon line and down. Thank you. 
Okay, Todd's going to come and do some projections and translations. Thank you. Now, projections and translations are really considered a double design because they use both forward inclinations and backward inclinations, side inclinations, and um, to either side. However, they can be obtained in one general movement. So we're going to go ahead and today teach the translations and the projections. Translations are those movements which take place to the side, and projections are those movements which are forward or backward. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to translate the head without the inclining of the head to either side. Okay, you got to keep it pulled up or rotations. That's right, no rotations. Okay. Keep it on just that horizontal line. Also, don't lift up the shoulder as you go over, which is another tendency. Okay, end up with some kind of interesting movement. Okay, standing up, devil zero. Now the difficulty is many times I'll go head, neck, chest, and then I end up losing the head position. So keep your head on your chest, on your shoulders. Okay as it were. Okay, going to your left will be head, neck, watch that shoulder, chest, waist, keep the pelvis down, pelvis, pelvis, waist, chest, neck, head. Okay, good. Now, the forward projection, something slightly different. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to bring your head forward, we're going to learn to bring it back. That was the translation. This is the projection. If I'm going to do a forward projection, then my head is going to come forward, then my neck, and my chest, my waist, and my pelvis. Pelvis. Now keep this from happening. Keep the pelvis tucked under. Waist, chest, neck, head. Now the tendency that, that happens on us is when we start to project forward, we start to bend here for doing the waist. Okay, so work on trying to get that in a straight line going forward. Okay, let's try it together. Ready? And head. Neck. Chest. Waist. Pelvis. Pelvis. Waist. Chest, neck, head. Now, don't start looking up and allowing the chest to drop or the pelvis to go back as you project forward the, the chest. Keep that pelvis under. Okay. Let's try it going backward. And head, neck, chest. Pelvis, the head and the neck. Waist, pelvis, and pelvis. Waist, chest, neck, head. Now I would like to show you how the projections and translations are actually just a double design. Let me choose a yeah. Okay, everybody sit down. Jeff's going to show us this. Okay, now what it is, is the forward projections are actually a inclination forward and an inclination back. However, head, neck, chest, waist, pelvis, you're dividing and you're using two parts together. One part will be going back and the other part will be going forward for the projections. For instance, the head projection, show us the head projection and the neck projection as well. Now go back to the double zero. All right, now watch. If he inclines his head backward, inclination of the head back, and he, he inclines his neck forward, that's a forward projection of the head and the neck. Back to double zero. Now, if he inclines the chest backward and the waist forward, okay, back to double zero, that's a forward projection. And it is created by half the body going one direction and the other half of the body going the other. If I reverse it, having the first part go back uh, forward instead of backward, I'll end up with a backward projection. For instance, now the head-neck combination, the head will go forward and the neck will go backward. That ends up with a backward projection. Double zero, please. Now the chest will go forward and the waist will go backward. Okay, that creates the backward projection. Double zero. Show us going backward, just in the movement, and forward. 
So as you can see, I can accomplish the movement without going through a forward and a backward inclination. However, when I do it, I can show you, it is actually just a double design. Okay, facing sideways, let's try another one. And this time, I'd like to show how we can go ahead and um, do the side inclinations. Okay, go ahead and show me a translation of the head to your left. Head, neck, back to double zero. Watch. Uh, side inclination to the right of the head and left of the neck. Back to the shoulder. Okay, back to double zero. Okay. I could go the other direction by having the head tilt the other direction. Inclination now to the left, the head, and the right of the neck. And double zero. Inclination left of the chest and right of the waist. Double zero. Now just translate to the side and double zero. Or translate incline to the right of the chest and left of the waist. Double zero. As you can see, the mime can get into each of these positions through the double design. Go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. Now, what might we use these things for is the question. Hi there. You'd come here for me. Just stand right in front of me, if you would. Okay? Now, Heather being so very, very tall, sometimes <laughs> it's difficult to see around her. So, I might just have to be on stage and have to do translation of head, neck, chest, waist, and pelvis to look around her. Oh, what's around her? Okay. So, I can see that the translations is to look around. Now, maybe we hear something, and you hear something over there, too. We listen with the translation of the head. Oh, it's over there. Okay, so all of a sudden something can be heard. Now, if she's standing to my side here, can't get away from me that quick. <laughs> she's standing here, and I'm standing a little bit far away from her, and she has a speck on her nose, and I want to get slightly closer. It's like, what's, what's, what's that on her nose? Oh. Okay. <laughs> now, if she's standing there, and I'm just a horde by the vision that I see, whoa! <laughs> A backward projection takes place. Thank you. Now, when something is too far away, not just a small thing, but also way off in the distance, there is a forward projection, or something comes too close. When it's comfortable, we just simply stand where we are and talk as we are talking now, or at least I am. Okay, if you'll go ahead and stand up, or have, let's have the four of you stand up, and we'll go ahead and do some pivots out of this. Okay? Now the pivots, whenever we're in mime, we're trying to use the pivots to, to turn around from our double zero and start the play, or perhaps we're using it for a metamorphosis or for a changing of character. That's just a, a transition. To work this, we have to learn that the feet positions either are going to cross over or cross behind. And when I cross over, I can go halfway or I can, com be, can go completely around. I can also do that on relevé. Okay? Or in plié. The foot play is generally either completely on toe, which causes me to make an adjustment, or it can be a toe-heel combination. Toe-heel combination. The actual thing is just something for you to work with. So let's us go through the five feet positions, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and land in half pivots in each one, starting with first. Okay, ready? And to first, cross, first, and first. Cross over wide for second, second. Cross open wide for second, second. Cross closer for third, Third, cross behind, close, third. Cross deep for fourth. Cross deep for fourth. Close for fifth. Close for fifth. Double zero, first position. Now what I'd like us to do is go ahead and do a complete turn, landing in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, starting with first, of course. Crossing over. 
and around, adjust first, crossing way behind into second, crossing closer for third, crossing deep for fourth, crossing close for fifth. Good. Double zero. Good job. And these pivots, of course, we'll see as we go into metamorphosis and as we go into changing of characters. Okay, let's go ahead and stand up. We're going to continue on. This concludes the pivots. We're going to go on into the marches, so if you will, to the sides. The first march that we are going to cover is the march crack. What it is is a position the Marceau created in which the foot develops forward to a point. And then you're going to put down the heel and then push onto the foot. Now, until that point, there is no weight on the foot. Point, talon. I can lift up the leg still. It still works. Okay? I'm going to push onto it and then develop through to the next position. Step back, double zero. What happens in this is my hand's going to come forward, developing with the foot on the point, heel, and then I'm going to breathe up into the first step. Okay, let's try that together. We're going to take uh, six steps together. Point, talon, poussé. Ready? And point, talon, poussé. Et point, talon, poussé. Point, heel, push. Point, Heel, push. Point, heel, push. Double zero. Great. The next one, done by Marilyn. Go ahead and come, Marilyn, and show us Marche sur Point, please. Okay. All right. Now for a Marche sur deux points means just walking on two points. And as we just finished the other one, you had one point here, and then you transferred the weight onto it, right? This time we're going to transfer using two points. So it'll be the same kind of a developé. You go developé, tendu. Then we're going to rise up onto two points, transfer the weight over the front foot. This is the tricky part. Lift the back leg and descend onto a straight leg. And you're on the promontory, avant, to the front. Okay? Then the same thing with the next leg. Point, two points. Transfer the weight, lift the foot, and descend. All right. So let's try that now all together. Marche sur deux points. And point, two points, transfer the weight, lift the leg, and down. Now not so mechanically. Let's let it flow so that it just transfers and goes down. The first walk, you don't want to go up and down. But this one we do. We want it to go sort of in a little circle. And zero. Good. I wanted to explain also you can use this uh, for a slow motion walk. Go ahead and get in your position. For a slow motion walk, then, all that you would need to do is vary it with your breathing and with also, obviously, your rhythm. So what would happen on a slow motion walk would be a slow development. Go up your inhale as you go up, and then exhale slowly. This time you're going to plie, and then go on up from there. Okay. So you can do a really interesting slow motion type walk. All right. Now, Marche Feline. I'll let you try the slow motion on your own time. <laughs> All right. So Marche Feline now is a catwalk. And what will happen is a similar kind of a developé. But this time when we develop, we're going to go in with the knee, turn out, lead with your heel. Now when I point, Rather than putting the foot down right there, like on the last two marches, 
we're going to put it down as far forward as we can. So that means you're going to have to uh, glee side, which is to slide. So it'll look something like this. So the weight has to be always forward and onto a straight leg on the promontory. Okay? Let me just show you a couple of times. Also, we're going to add a little bit of a character to it this time. So you're going to have to use uh, your chest, your head, and the way that you use your arms in the Renaissance is going to be a little more cat-like. And later on, uh, it would be fun for you to try to develop this into Marche de Tigre, which is a tiger march, which is more exaggerated than this one. We'll work on that later. Okay? So what happens then is the chest is going to go back, the head is going to be inclined forward, but then it comes to neutral, and it goes back, and neutral, like that. All right, so let me just show you once. It'll look all together like this. Try to get that glissade in there. Okay, when we have more room now, you should really be able to travel across the floor and keep the weight forward all the time. Okay? Marche Féline on the right foot. And... And zero. Thank you. Come back and Todd will continue. Good. Our last march that we're going to do is the Marche Anglaise, which has two different variations due to the fact that Marceau teaches it in two different manners. What it is, or the English march, is what I'm going to do is keep over the idea of translating or glissading. But now I'm going to keep my foot flat and step onto the foot. Hand is going to be in a pallet. And I'm going to step onto the foot and then bring the other one in to the side here, almost stopping it. And just before the stop, I'll re-accelerate into the next step. There you go. Step back. So the step will look something to this effect. And the small arrêt, the small stop in between each step. So I'll stop the foot, posing it behind the heel, okay? Posing the foot slightly behind, and then around into the next step. And keeping here, I can leave always over, your balance always over that front foot. Let's try it together. Double zero, five, six, seven, And stop. All right, step backward. Now we'll try the variation. Variation is basically the same with the only difference of having a small saccade, a small saccade inside of it that causes the foot to bounce. Okay? It's like you're kicking, boom, and it bounces off the wall, as it were, off a ball. Right? And we're going to have our hands much more mechanical. Boom. Okay? Let's try it with that variation, with that little saccade, the bounce, the jolt in the walk. Starting on the right foot. Five, six, seven, eight. Double zero. Very well. Go ahead and go back. Now, these different marches can be used in different ways. The first march that we learned, the crack, you can use for the child sneaking. Okay? You can use it for that person who's trying to be quiet as they enter, or cautious. You want to make sure that there's something underneath you. The second position, as Marilyn said, the march de point, when we go into it, we can go into that slow motion. Now, the faster the run, the higher the foot, the greater the plie. And I breathe into that step. Okay? As we continue on into the marche feline, remember the glissade. 
as we do it, stepping onto it. You'll be using glissades for a lot of other characters, so it's a foundational march, as well as on the Anglaise, for those wooden characters who have a little bit of the worry, are perhaps for your tin soldiers. You're more upright, um, aggressive things. Each of these character marches, if you can conquer them, are going to help you be able to create a lot of different characters and the way they transfer their weight, which is what a march is, a transfer of weight. I tell you what, this completes the first section that we're going to be doing today. Uh, why don't we go ahead and take a break, five minutes or so, and come back and continue on with this next section, okay? Go ahead, you're dismissed. That was good. Ready to go. <laughs>